Yo, we can be something special. Just remember, your mind can be your weapon. <gasps> From the streets, we were summoned. It's a great story, but I don't think people pay attention. I mean, we've had like a Coach Carter, which I think was a fictional movie, wasn't it? And then we had a movie called Spare Parts with George Lopez in it. It's a similar story where these kids went to a robotics co uh, competition. Yeah. And I think they got yeah. like second or third place. Well, I taught robotics yeah. too, so that's interesting. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, well, Mr. Martinez, we need more people like yourself. Teachers will get it. <laughs> do. Believe me, I have, I'm a better person since knowing Mario for the last 20 years. I am of 22 well, years. 23 years now. Wow, but yeah, Mr. Martinez, do you, do you think that, you know, teachers don't get enough credit because a lot of teachers in a lot of underprivileged areas they don't have the parental inspiration, so it's up to a teacher. Well, to everything has that. changed so yeah. much over the years. I just yeah. feel so bad with everything going on right now. I'm retired now. This is my fourth year of retirement, and uh, what they're having to go through now is very difficult. You know, so I, my heart goes out to all of them. You know, uh, mm -hmm. it's a very difficult task that is in front of them, and for the students too. You know, I hope we can get over this hurdle and go back to going, yeah. you know, hope so. uh, normally. Yeah. Soon, you know. But, now, but Carla, how did you find the story? So that's a great, see, I always say that this is a tr an amazing true story with an even more amazing backstory. <laughs> that's pretty much what, what it is. So Mary is very much a part of this. So what happened is, um, uh, on a, do you remember the Miami Herald used to have a, um, a magazine kind of like the New York Times on Sundays? It was called Tropic. And um, one Sunday morning I woke up and there was an art, the front page of it was um, a guy, an African-American guy. He actually is not African-American, he's Dominican, but um, he was a black guy with dreadlocks holding a chess piece and the name of the article was called Kings in the Hood. And mm -hmm. I was like, what? So I read the story. It was very compelling. And I said, I had like a, a quantum shift in my mind. It literally, I felt like my mind had a shit, like literally a quantum shift of like, mm -hmm. who really plays chess in this world today? Like who really <laughs> does? Like, it's not these, you know, these guys that, and girls are actually guys at the time go to like, that went to, you know, these prep schools up in uh, Massachusetts or New York or the Northeast or wherever it, it's not it's not it's just not that and the people that don't know this um, are not are, are they're better off knowing really what is happening in not only in the chess world but in in, in everything but in this particular case it was about the, these um, th these boys and this amazing program that Mario ran for 10 years so um, one thing led to another and I got a hold of Mario and uh, I interviewed, I chose 1998 because not only was that what the article was based on, but it was also Mario. Well, oh, the article was one year before. 97, exactly. 97. And right. it was right. written by John Dorshness who followed right. us right. for like several months. And he right. wrote a whole story by, he was story. took part in everything we were doing for like a few yeah. months. And it's an excellent story. What was it like watching John play you? I mean, that's probably well, It was very surreal. He did a great job. I mean, the way he just dived into the whole thing, the, his relationship with his actors and, and to do both parts like that, he did an amazing job. It was an amazing film. It was exciting to be a part of it all just to be there. Mario was, a very, Mario was a very, very important part of all the boys were that were portrayed and Mario obviously were the consultants in the chess movie oh, because yeah. everything they actually, I don't know if you know this, but they played all the games played in the movie were the actual games played in, in the day. Oh, wow. So, um, everybody had written all their moves down, especially Marcel. And um, it was very important for me. In and just like the little book, the little book, Marcel book had that real. little book. <laughs> that book is real. Yeah. Exactly. Uh -huh. wow. It is real. Yeah. He'd be like, I'd have to kill you if you lose this book. So, you know, <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, I just wanted to make sure that, because um, I knew that the acting was going to be taken care of by John. I knew that all of the technical stuff was, the, you know, the DP cinematography uh, uh, with Zach and I knew that everything was going to be right. I just wanted, I just wanted to make sure that I portray, I, I portrayed their Mario's life and 
those five boys' life in the most elegant and accurate and obviously cinematically, you know, uh, appealing, but it had to be accurate and, and elegant and, 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 accurate, and accurate to the point of, of almost uh, obsession because, you know, it's real life and I didn't want to use movie magic. So how much, well, that brings me to my next question. How much of it was dramatized or did all, all that actually happen? No, most of it happened. I mean, it's funny, Mary, I'll let you answer, but somebody, somebody, uh, some, just some at random person on Instagram, like, oh, well, it's such a cliche. Who wants to watch another high school? You know, why don't you write something new? And I, I wanted to answer him, but I'm like, nah, I'm not going to do it. But it's not a cliche because it's a true story. If I would have sat down to write a new story about a high school, you know, then maybe, but this is true. So there's nothing cliche about what actually happened, but go ahead, Mario. Go yeah, ahead. well, it's not a documentary. It is a story, but all the key things that are in the film happened. Okay. Uh, I think what Carla did for, in social media that I love, and I've told her, I love it, is where she put that one scene that CNN did where Marcel is, it's in the movie where Marcel is playing blindfolded. And he has the players in back of him and he's playing. That was CNN filmed that. They were amazed. Yeah, they were astonished. Yeah. They couldn't yeah. believe that Marcel could do that. And then she put both of them side by yeah, side. Yeah. And I said, like when she did it, I said, that is fantastic. That really shows everybody how real this really was. Now, Mario, what would be your advice, especially now, maybe to other, you know, people and not in power, but in charge of some of these kids? I mean, do you think they need a little more inspiration or give, All them, some, kids need give them some kind of discipline. Avenue. You need to find what kids are good at. You got to provide them, you know, whether it is, you know, I used to love it when you had, uh, you taught, uh, let's say uh, a carpentry or you taught uh, different things in the school, like auto mechanic and things like that. You never know what a student is good at and you need to provide with, for them things that they can show their talents Okay, and all you need is a place, a safe space for these kids to play in and, and, and to show their gifts because there are so many kids out there that their talents is incredible and we need to find and tap into that. And I just Mario, for these kids with it. I think Mario is underestimating himself because uh, underestimating what, what he did. I think not only did he provide a safe space, but he found a way by being on literally uh, he loved those kids and still does unconditionally no matter how you know much trouble they got into or how much trouble they were they knew that they weren't going to be abandoned by him mm -hmm. and they knew that every move that they made on that chessboard just like in life it may not affect you in five minutes but like oh my god they when they would go like that they realize five moves ten moves down well it's the same thing in life and they realized that and, and Mario gave them that ability to feel, feel like someone was their mentor, their champion. Yeah, we talk about everything, you know, and, uh, and yeah. it, it was like a family. And that's, we, yeah. we shared so much together. I mean, we would play chess before school, after school, during lunch. And sometimes I'd come home at night, you know, and my wife, Connie, would say, God, you know, try and get here a little earlier, but. <laughs> It's just, they were enjoying, we were all enjoying ourselves in what we were doing. And it was exciting. It's good to see here that, you know, a lot of times we blame society for a lot of these issues, but a lot of time is home life because mm -hmm. it goes on from generation to generation. The parents grow up having no hope and then they pass that on to their kids. Like there's no hope. Yeah, but kids, right? they got to learn that it's up to them. They're yeah. the ones that can get themselves out of whatever situation they're in. They got to make the right moves. Yeah. yeah, but they have to have someone like you. <laughs> the right moves, I love it. Oh, they have yeah. to have someone like you in order to give them what they need. That's all kids need. That's right. all kids need. And, and as teachers, we need to find that for them, whatever it is. And I, I, I got to give it to a lot of teachers. They invest so much time and they love their kids. And I love that the kids in the movie, they're, they tell each other, I got you. I got you. I, I mean, got so you. Sweet. We're family. Yeah, they depend on sweet. each other. Yeah. You know, it is sweet. And, the, you know, I have to say that John um, had, you know, he's a, he comes from, the, from Broadway. So for him, what's important for John 
And the, I think one of the reasons why every single review says the same thing, that these boys that just met a month before the filming, everyone felt like they've known each other forever. And that's because John rehearsed. Even after 12 hour day, he rehearsed for the next day. And rehearsing is important in, in, in theater, not so much in film. You come in and you know you read and you go back to your trailer and blah, blah, blah. That's not how it was in this movie. We, they, they, John wanted them to have chess swagger, you know, <laughs> what to do with that piece once you got it. And you, know, it, 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 you could see it in the movie. It, it really came through. I mean, these guys, they're all still friends. And um, it, it, I think it portrayed very well through the screen that they're friends and yeah I'm in touch with all the kids over the years yeah. they call me all the time you know and it's exciting to see how they're doing in their lives and they're all doing good oh, they're all doing really good I'm very proud of all of that yeah you see them at the end of the movie and you're like oh and then you get a sense of relief because one character you don't know like oh no something's gonna happen right. to him. he died but he did <laughs> yeah. yeah so where, where can audiences catch this great movie so it, it's on Apple TV, iTunes, uh, Amazon, DirecTV, Vudu, Stars, um, Microsoft. It's about every platform. Yeah. Every platform but Netflix. Thank um, you for doing the interview. Thank you, Mario. Okay. I mean, we need, we need more people like you. I enjoyed it. <laughs> well, thank you Me so too. much.